Hey everyone, it's Megan here from Megan Makes Do, and today I'm going to show you how to make this super soft, ultra cozy knit cardigan using Lion Brand's Gopher Fleece Sherpa yarn. The Lobby cardigan features a slightly oversized fit, tapered sleeves, and slits on the side. This cardigan is super soft, super warm. It's perfect for Friday night football games, going apple picking, or just cozying up on the couch at home. I love this thing. It's absolutely perfect and it's super easy to make. All you're gonna need to do is make five different pieces and then we'll assemble our cardigans together. So you're gonna be making a back panel, two front panels, and two sleeves. And for the back panels and front panels, they're just basic rectangles, no shaping is involved. And for the sleeves, there is slight tapering. It's worked from the bottom going up and there's a little bit of increases on either side, just a couple rows. Um, so for this tutorial, I'm going to be making a size 2X, um, but the pattern is available in sizes extra small through 5X. So I do recommend following along for your size. You can find the free written pattern on my blog. I'll put a link in the description below. Um, you can also find this pattern as a digital PDF that you can download and print if you'd rather do that. The link for that is also in the description below, or you can get the best of both worlds and buy the complete kit from Lion Brand Yarn, which includes a PDF copy of the pattern and all the yarn you'll need for the size that you want to make. So I'm gonna start by showing you guys how to make the front panel. It's gonna be very similar to the back panel, but because it's a little bit skinnier, it's easier to show you on film. So let's go ahead and get started. Again, for this tutorial, I'm going to be using Lion Brand's Go For Fleece Sherpa yarn and a pair of size 15, 10 millimeter knitting needles, and I have them attached to a 32 inch circular cord. Um, I definitely prefer using circulars, even though we're just going to be working in rows. I feel that it just makes it a little bit easier. So definitely pick whatever um, works best for you. Now, the Gopher Fleece Sherpa from Lion Brand is so awesome. It's such a unique, soft, beautiful yarn. Um, it's a jumbo weight seven. So if you decide to sub with a different yarn, just make sure that you're getting one that is a similar weight um, and just know that it's going to look a little bit different since this one is super fuzzy and creates kind of like a neat look where you don't see the stitches. Before we get started, I'm gonna show you a little bit more about this yarn. So it is very unique. You can see here that it's a very thick braided thread. And off of the thread, you have the little fuzzy pieces of the Sherpa. Um, so this yarn does not have a lot of give to it. It's not super stretchy. So keep that in mind when you're working. Um, try to keep your tension pretty loose um, and make sure that you have met gauge before you get started. So if you need to know what the gauge swatch is, I'll pop it up here. Go ahead and make your gauge using stockinette stitch before we get started to make sure that you have the right needle size. Okay, so to start, you're gonna make a slip knot on your needle. And again, this will kind of help you see how this yarn behaves when you're working with it. I find that it's easier to knit with than crochet with, um, just because all your stitches will live on your needles. So I'm just using a long tail cast on, and for my front panels for size 2X, I will need 18 stitches. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I've cast on 18. Please make sure that you're following for your size. And we're gonna do the front panel even though it's exactly the same, it's worked exactly the same as the back panel as well. So go ahead and cast on the right number of stitches for your size. Um, and again, you can find the free written version at the link in the description below. So as you can see, sometimes the stitches look a little bit jumbled together because the yarn is so fluffy. So um, it's a good idea to kind of feel on your needle for the stitches or separate them out and make sure that you have the correct amount on your needles before turning your work. Um, and because this yarn, that thread does not have a lot of give to it, um, I do recommend kind of going a little bit more on the loose side just so that you are able to get your needle 
into those stitches for each row that you do. So here you can see it kind of gets all fluffed up at the side here. Um, but you can easily just move those stitches around to get the right count. Okay, so now I have my 18 stitches for size 2X, and this is one of the front panels, and I'm just going to turn and get ready to work row one. Okay, so for row one, we're going to be knitting all the stitches. So every odd row, starting with row one, will be a knit row. So just make sure that you're only going through one stitch because they can get bunched up. So insert your needle through the first stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then slide that loop off the left needle. So just basic knitting all the way across. And take your time with this first row. It can be a little bit tight. And just always make sure that you're feeling with your fingers as you go to make sure that you're only going through one strand of the yarn so it does get a little bit tricky here it can look a little bit confusing it takes a little bit of getting used to um, since it is such a fluffy yarn but the outcome is totally worth it so for row one and all odd rows we're just going to knit each stitch across Okay, so we've gotten to the last stitch. Oop, this one got a little bit sticky. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and redo that. There we go. So there I have finished row one, which is a knit row. I'm gonna turn my work. Now, this yarn is very hard to count rows with because you can't see them at all. So I highly, highly, highly recommend getting a little row counter. I'll put a link to the one that I use in the description below. And all you're gonna do is for every row that you complete, you just turn the counter one, and you keep track of your rows using that. That way you know what row that you're on and you don't have to worry about counting the rows because trust me, you will not be able to see them. So for row two and all even rows here on out, you are going to purl each stitch across. So super simple, super basic, just purl each stitch. And you'll do this for all the even rows. So we're just doing basic stocking at stitch, which is one row of knit, one row of purl, over and over in the number of stitches that you need for your size, and then in the number of rows that you need for your size. And again, you can find all that information on the blog in the free written pattern or in the printable PDF version that's available in my shop. So I'm gonna go ahead and purl the rest of this row. Okay, we've gotten to the last stitch of that row, and then I can turn, and then don't forget to change your row counter so you know I just finished row two. 
and now I'm ready for row three. And again, I'm just gonna knit across for row three since it's an odd row, and then row four will of course be a purl. So you can see that you can't see the rows here at all. So definitely, definitely keep track of your rows, whether that's with a row counter or you write it down on a piece of paper, just so that you know where you're at in the pattern. So you're just gonna keep doing knit rows and purl rows until you have reached the right number of rows for your size. So you can see here, this is a finished panel and you can see how the fabric is made. It looks the same on both sides since we're using stockinette stitch, which I love. You don't have to worry too much about a right or wrong side, but I definitely recommend using your row counter to complete your panels. So just continue on for the amount of rows that you need for your size. And then I will meet you back here and show you some tips on how to properly bind off. Okay, so I've gotten to the end of my first panel. You can see it's very long here. Um, and I'm ready to bind off my stitches to finish off my panel. Um, so some things to keep in mind for binding off. You want to do this as loose as possible. Um, so because of the way that this yarn is made, um, the thread does not have any give, like I said before. So it's not gonna be very stretchy and your bind off could become very tight and kind of pinch the top part of your panel together, which you don't want. So when you're starting, we're gonna do just a basic bind off. You're gonna be working on um, an even or an odd row, so a knit row. And we're just going to knit the first two stitches and when you knit them try to pull your loop up a little bit longer than you normally would um, so you've got some extra give in there and you're keeping it pretty loose so you know feel free to adjust it before you bind off then you're just going to take that first loop and slide it over the second one or the right over the left and we've got one stitch bound off. Then make sure that you're pulling that loop up so it's a little bit looser than normal. You don't want it to be super tight on your needle because then you're gonna have some pulling at the end. Then we're gonna knit one more stitch. Again, keeping it loose, pull that loop up, and then bind it off by slipping the right loop over the left loop. There we go, and then make sure that you keep that new loop very loose so pull it up a little bit um because i noticed that the first time i bound off it was way too tight and you could see on my panel the top was like pulling together and i didn't want my shoulder seams to be too tight and then i lose some of that length down the arm so you're just going to continue to bind off using this method you just knit the next stitch and once you have two loops on your right needle you slide the right loop over the left or the first over the second and continue to bind off all the way across your row. Again, just make sure that you keep those loops loose. Okay, so here I am, I have my last stitch that I need to bind off. So I'm going to knit that stitch, again, knitting it loosely. And then I'm gonna slip my right loop over the left loop and finish that off. And then I'm just going to cut my yarn, leaving a long tail for seaming, of course. Um, and then I'm just gonna pull that whole loop through to fasten off. But here you can see that my bind up does not have a lot of give to it. Um, that's normal. Just make sure that you're staying as loose as possible so you don't end up with any bunching. So I just cut the end off and then pull it through and I have one whole front panel complete. So there you can see, look at this gorgeous Sherpa fabric that we've made using this yarn. It's so forgiving. It's not going to show any like crazy mistakes you've made. Um, super, super love that about this yarn. So what you're going to do is make two front panels and one back panel. Again, they're just basic rectangles using stockinette stitch. Once you have those three panels made, I'll meet you back here and show you how to make the sleeves. 
Okay, so now we're ready to make our sleeves. So again, we're using the same things that we used before. We're gonna be working in stocking net, but our sleeves are gonna have a little bit of tapering in them. You're going to basically be making a very elongated trapezoid shape. So it's gonna start at the cuff, the very bottom, and work its way up, and you'll be working increases along the way every few rows, and you'll work an increase on both sides. So, I've made this little chart to help you. Um, it, you can easily see where your increase rows will be. Um, so for 2x, I'm going to start with 18 stitches. And then every sixth row, I'm going to be increasing. So I'm only ever going to increase on a knit row. Um, and so for most of the sizes, the increases will be on the same row. There's two sizes here that increase a little bit at a different rate. So make sure that you're following along with the written pattern um, for the size that you are making. And then it's really easy to adjust your sleeves. If you want them a little bit longer or shorter, you can just add or subtract rows here at the end. Um, but just make sure that you're hitting that final increase mark because that's gonna be your um, underarm like area. So like your armhole depth, you want your armhole to fit <laughs> properly. Um, so definitely reference this chart and the written pattern as we're going. I'll show you the basics. Again, I'm making the size 2X, so try to follow along the best you can using the stitch counts for your size. So I'm just going to put a slip knot on my needle and then I'm gonna go ahead and cast on 18 stitches. So make sure that you're casting on the right number of stitches for the size you are making. And again, we just started our first sleeve. Okay, so for my first row, I'm just doing the same as I did for the front and back panels. I'm going to knit each stitch across. So you'll do just basic stocking net for the first few rows. So just count however many rows you need to do before your first increase. Um, and again, that's going to vary depending on what size you are making. So I recommend looking at the chart, looking at the written pattern, um, for the 2x size that I'm making now, I'm going to do six rows of stocking net. So I'm going to end on a purl row so I'm ready to increase when I'm getting ready to do my next knit row. So go ahead and complete the number of rows of stocking net you need to do for your size, for your sleeve. And then when you are get to your first increase row, Come back here and I will show you what to do. Okay, so here you can see I've done six rows of stocking net. I know you can't really see the rows, but I know with my row counter that I have six. So I've hit my first increase row. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna be increasing at the beginning and the end of the row using those first and last stitches. So this is a knit row, it's a row seven and I'm going to knit one front and back in the first stitch, and that will be one increase. So to do knit one front back, you are going to knit a stitch like normal, but you're not gonna pull off the stitch off the left needle yet. So pull up a loop, make sure it's pretty loose because again, you don't want it to get too tight. And now we're gonna put our right needle into the back of the stitch that we just worked into and then we're gonna yarn over and we're gonna draw up another loop. So again, insert your right needle into the back of the stitch that you just knit into, yarn over, pull up a loop. This can get a little bit tricky with this yarn. Um, so try to pull up your loop as loose as possible. Now I have two loops made into one stitch and now I can remove it from my needle. So I've increased by one. Then I'm just going to knit all the stitches until I get to my last stitch of this row. So again, you're only increasing at the beginning and the end every couple of rows. And we're gonna do a knit one front back increase no matter which side we're on. 
So I'm just going to continue to knit each stitch until I have one stitch left on my left needle. Okay, so now I have one stitch left on my left needle and I'm going to again knit one front back into this stitch as well. So insert your right needle, draw up a loop. Don't pull off the loop off your left needle yet. Go ahead and insert your right needle back into the back of the stitch you just worked into. Yarn over and carefully draw up another loop. So you can see here, sometimes your needle might get stuck into the Sherpa strands. Totally okay, <laughs> it'll work itself out. So I've increased by two stitches. I increased at the beginning and the end of this row. So now I'm going to turn and I'm going to work a purl row all the way across. And you're, again, you're going to continue to do just stocking that stitch for however many rows you need to do. It'll show you in the pattern. Um, for my size, I'm increasing every sixth row. So I'm going to do five rows of just regular stocking net. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then I will increase again after those five rows. But again, you're always going to be doing your increases on a knit row and only in the first and last stitch of that row. So definitely reference the chart. Um, if you have questions with this, I'm happy to answer any of your questions. Just leave them in the comment below or you can contact me um, at Megan at MeganMakesDo.com. So keep track on here. You can also use your chart. You can cross out as you go if you'd rather do that. It's an easy way to keep track of your rows as well. You can use your stitch counter. But every sixth row, I'm going to be increasing on each side until I get to that full width that I need for my armhole. And then you will go ahead and bind off just like we did before, again, making sure to keep it very loose. Okay, so now that we've finished our front and back panels and our sleeves, we are ready to seam our cardigan together. So here we have the back panel. This is the back panel laying down right here. Um, and this is like the top edge and you can make sure that you have your wrong side facing up or right side, whichever side you like best really can be the one um, that faces out. And then here is one of my front panels all the way up. I've got my long tail here and it's threaded through a large blunt tapestry needle. Um, and we're going to be seaming the front panel to the back panel along the shoulder. So I like to use the mattress stitch for seaming, but you can use whatever seaming method works best for you. Um, you can do whip stitch, you can even slip stitch the pieces together if you want, totally up to you. Um, it can be a little bit tricky. It's hard to know like how to line up the stitches correctly. Um, so I wouldn't worry so much about that. If you want to, you can measure across your front and back panel and just make sure that you are seaming both front panels on evenly across your back panel. You'll have a little space in between the front panels um, that where the back panel doesn't have any stitches attached. So I'm going to go ahead and use my tapestry needle to seam this first front panel to the back panel. Again, this is the top shoulder seam. Um, and I'm just going to work from the inside of the panel out and then go to the next panel, zigzag across again from the inside out, just zigzagging back and forth across, um, try and do this as evenly as possible. So just make sure that when you are seaming that you are actually getting underneath the thread of the yarn. Um, you don't want to go like that just through the for Sherpa fuzzy part because it's not going to hold. So make sure that you're actually grabbing underneath that little like strand that the yarn is on. And we're just going to seam it back and forth. You can see that with this yarn, the seam is basically going to disappear. You might see a little bit of it, but it's such a fluffy forgiving yarn that even if your seam isn't perfect, no one's going to be able to tell. That's another thing that I love about this yarn. It's so forgiving um, and the seams look great no matter which method you use. 
So we're just going to continue to seam our first front panel to our back panel. And you can see in the diagram that um, with those blue lines, you can see the back panel, front panel, where they come together. Um, that's what we're doing right now. So I'm just going to continue to seam this front panel all the way to the end. And again, I like to always start when I'm seaming the shoulders like this from the outside into that neckline. I feel that I'm able to control what I'm doing better and I can always measure as I go and make sure that I'm getting it the right amount of cross. So however wide your front panels should be, you can find the size chart in the written pattern. That's how far along on the back you want it to be. Okay, so we're getting to the end here. And then I'm just going to leave it like that. I'm not gonna weave my ends in yet until I know that everything is secure and looks good. That way, if I need to make adjustments, I can take this seam out and redo it if needed. So I've got one front panel attached. This is my first shoulder seam. I'm gonna move my panel over. And now I'm gonna lay the second front panel down onto the back panel lining up the edges so I know that I have it in the right spot and then I'm going to use the long tail from my back panel to seam this front panel on. So again using a large blunt tapestry needle I'm going to thread the end on. It can be a little bit tricky to get this on um, so take your time. I try to get that um, support thread that all the Sherpa pieces are on. I try to get that through the needle first and then the rest will easily pull through. So now we've got that tail into our needle and we're ready to seam the second front panel to the back panel. So again, I'm just gonna use um, my favorite, which is the mattress stitch. <clears throat> so I'm just going to be going in through the center out to the outer edge, zigzagging back and forth between the panels. And again, since you can't really tell where exactly your stitches are, normally you would try to line up one stitch on the back panel with one stitch on the front panel. If you're not able to do that, if you can't see your stitches very well or feel for them very well, um, just make sure that you're going through the strands um, and catching that strand of yarn as you go. And then again, you can always get your tape measure out and measure so that you know that you are both front panels are measuring the same distance across your back panel. But continue to do this all the way across until both front panels have been securely attached. Okay, so I finished seaming the second front panel to the back panel. Um, and again, I'm just going to leave all my ends unwoven for now so I can try it on and make sure that it's fitting me correctly. Um, so you'll have your two shoulder seams up here, here and here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to kind of open this up. So here, take this side. So here is my shoulder seam right here. This is my neckline. I have my second front panel this way. So here, this is my neckline. If I pull it over, here's my outer edge. So I've got my front panel here and my back panel here. My seam is right here. You can kind of see it right there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my sleeve and what you want to try to do is match up the center of your sleeve with the center, the shoulder seam here. Um, 
So since it's really hard to see the stitches with this yarn, I just like to fold my sleeve in half and then here's the fold. So I pinch the fold here and then I will line it up with my seam so that I know, okay, this is the center of my sleeve up against the shoulder. And I'd like to kind of start here. I'll usually um, put a stitch marker, which I don't think I have any on me right now, um, and kind of line it up and use a tape measure to measure out because each side should go down the same amount. So you'll be seaming one half of the sleeve down with the front panel and the other half of the sleeve down the other side with the back panel. Okay, so you can kind of see, I'll throw a little diagram up here so you can see this is the seam that we're gonna be working on now. I'm gonna go ahead and grab some stitch markers and my tape measure to make sure that I'm doing this correctly. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and use a stitch marker to help attach the center of my sleeve to my shoulder seam, just to keep it in place. And then what I wanna do is from that point, I'm gonna measure down the front panel. So loosely laying out my sleeve. Okay, I'm about like nine and three quarters to 10 inches down. And I'm gonna place another stitch marker. So the end of my sleeve will come down my front panel about 10 inches. So here you can see I've attached my other stitch marker here. And then I want my second half of my sleeve to come down the same amount. That way I know that I'm getting it evenly distributed and we're not gonna have a wonky sleeve. Okay, so this, it seems to be a little bit off here. So I'm gonna move my sleeve down a little bit because I really want it to be even all the way on both sides. So I think it needs to come over just a smidge. And again, while this yarn is super forgiving, it's also a little bit tricky, especially since when we bind off, it tends to get fairly tight in here if we're not keeping it loose enough. And then our seam tends to disappear on us as well. So just take your time, go slow, make sure you're using your tape measure when needed. Um, that will help ensure that you're getting it properly aligned for your seaming and you won't up, end up with a wonky card. So I'm just going to attach my sleeve, line up the best I can. Okay, that's much better. So I know I'm going the same distance from the seam down the front and back panels. that on there. So now what you can do, I like to work from my center out either side. So what I like to do is cut a long piece of the yarn enough so that I can start in the middle and I'm going to pull it like halfway through so I can work both ends of yarn for my seam. So I'm going to cut an extra long piece here and get that threaded onto my tapestry needle. Okay, and then we're gonna start in the center here and just as we did before, I'm gonna go up from the inside to the outside. And I'm gonna pull that about halfway so I have a long tail here and a long tail here so I can use this tail to seam down this edge and this tail to seam down this edge. I want to make sure I'm getting through the sleeve. 
and then through this front panel as well. Ooh, I got through, I think. There we go, that must be my seam. And again, I'm just going to go back and forth using the mattress stitch seaming method. Taking my time, making sure I'm getting it evenly distributed all the way down the front panel. And this, having those stitch markers in place really helps because then I know, okay, I just need to seam until I hit that stitch marker. And again, this isn't going to be totally perfect since we're just kind of feeling around trying to find where our stitches and rows are. So that's why I think it really helps to have a tape measure on hand so that you know that you're going the right amount down each panel when you're attaching your sleeve. done with this one and then we'll go back down the other side of the sleeve and the back panel And again, I'm just gonna leave my tail just in case I need to make adjustments. Um, if you get your sleeve on and you realize, oh my gosh, it's way too short or it's way too long, that's why I recommend like seaming it, but don't fully fasten off until you are satisfied and you know that your cardigan is going to fit. Especially with yarn like this where, you know, it does kind of like pull in some places and, you're not always going to have like a perfect shape at the end. Um, highly, highly, highly recommend trying it on as you go. Don't commit to it until you know for sure that you're happy with what you have. So, okay. Uh, so I threaded on this long tail that we left on the other side. I'm going to use this to seam the other side of my sleeve to the back panel of my piece. So here we're at the middle. And again... I like using the mattress stitch. Whip stitching could also work here as well. And just make sure you're evenly doing it until you get to your next stitch marker. So for this size, this is the 2X. Um, my armhole is about 20 inches from one end to the other. So half of that is 10, so I should have 10 inches of sleeve going down the back panel and 10 inches of sleeve going down the front panel. It's gonna differ depending on what size you are making. So make sure that you're following the instructions for your size. But this is the method and this is how you will seam no matter what size you are doing. Through a loop of the nine. This yarn is definitely takes some getting used to working with. Can be a little bit tricky, especially when you're used to being able to see all of your stitches and rows. This is not that kind of yarn. <laughs> this is 
fluffy. But it has a beautiful result in the end that I just love. So, okay. I can take my one stitch marker out. All right, that's pretty secure. So now we've got one sleeve attached. You're gonna just repeat this process with the other sleeve on the other side of your cardigan. Again, just make sure that you are lining up the center of your sleeve with your shoulder seam. And then using stitch markers, pin it in place so that you're getting the same amount of inches going down your front and your back. And I know right now my seams have kind of disappeared. It, you can't even really tell <laughs> what I'm pointing at. Um, but once we get that second sleeve attached, I promise it'll make a little more sense. I can show you here. We're going to be folding it in half. So here is our sleeve. So we're gonna fold our sleeve in half and we're gonna seam under the arm into the armpit. So here you can see back panel will be seen to the front panel and our sleeve is folded in half and we're gonna seam all the way along here. But this is a great time to stop Try it on, you can use your stitch markers again um, to kind of hold everything in place. So this is my underarm. I can also pin down here the bottom of my sleeve, use my stitch marker to go through there. It's a great time, try it on, make sure that your sleeves are long enough, that they're wide enough, that it feels comfortable um, to make sure that you have the perfect fit before we move on to doing the underarm and side seams. So go ahead and get your other sleeve attached and I will meet you back here and we can seam our underarms and sides. Okay, so here's my cardigan laying out so you can see what it looks like. It's folded in half now that the sleeves are attached and I've lined up my sleeve and my sides. So you can see here, um, this is like the center armpit. I've got my tail still hanging out. I'm gonna be seaming from the center out to the cuff of the sleeve. So this is the sleeve folded in half. We're gonna seam along that edge, again, using whichever seaming method you prefer. And then we're gonna seam down the side, but I'm gonna leave an 11 inch slit. So make sure that the bottoms of your front and back panel are lined up. Use a measuring tape to measure 11 inches up from the bottom, place a stitch marker there, and then you're going to seam from the armpit down to the stitch marker. Um, and again, you can use whatever seaming method you prefer, um, and you're just gonna seam your sides and your underarm on your sleeve, and do that on both sides to complete your Lottie cardigan. Okay, so now that we've finished our Lotties, I wanted to show you real quick um, just how I like to weave in ends. I always found that as a beginner knitter and crocheter, I was always confused on how do I weave in the ends? And especially when it comes to this kind of yarn, it can be a little bit tricky. Um, luckily, this yarn is super forgiving and your ends are going to be like invisible once you seam them in. So here I am, I'm at a seam. This is the side of my cardigan. So it's a little bit thicker right here where the seam is and I find that's a great spot to weave in the ends. So I'm just gonna start by inserting my needle, going through one of the stitches towards like the, in like the seam area and I'm just gonna continue to pull it through and then one of the methods I like to do with this yarn um, is I kind of like wrap it around as I go. So almost like I'm twisting it around the seam, um, but I'm just gonna be catching like strands of the yarn, but going you know from the front to the back and back around, from front to back around. Um, just kind of twisting it around. I feel that that helps kind of keep it secure in the seam and it's secure in the cardigan. And then if you want to, feel free to make um, little knots along the way if you'd like, just for that added security so you know that your thread isn't, your yarn isn't gonna pop out at you at the end. So make a tight little knot here, just like that. And then maybe 
thread it through a couple stitches one more time. Um, and when you feel that that end is fully secure, you know it's not going to come back out. Just trim it as close as possible. And again, it just is almost invisible. You can't even tell where the end is, where it went. Um, that's the one thing that is so great, again, about this yarn. Um, you also might have some tails that aren't by a seam. They're just at the end of your panel. Um, and that I'm going to show you too. That one's pretty simple to weave in as well. Um, the trick with this is just not to scrunch up your yarn or pull your yarn too tight when you're weaving it in so that you don't get it all bunched up. So I've threaded onto my needle. I'm just going to find some strands of yarn to go through and just loosely pull it through. And then I kind of like to pull at the end, make sure I'm stretching out my panel um, so that I know that I'm not bunching up my panel at all while I'm weaving in the ends. But just go slow. You're not going to be able to really get your needle through too many stitches at once. Um, I also like to, when I weave in ends, kind of go back over itself. Um, kind of like zigzag back and forth on top of itself. I don't like to just do one straight weave in, like one like stretch through. I like to go back and forth a couple times to really get it secure. And again, if you want to put a knot in, um, that's definitely okay. You're not going to see it with this yarn. Um, and I think that that just adds a little bit of extra security. You know it's not going to go anywhere. Because um, the worst thing that could happen when you're done with the project is that your ends start coming unraveled or coming out. Um, you want it to be definitely secure since you're probably going to be wearing this a lot this season. So once I'm happy with where I've woven in, I'm just going to snip it off. And once you have all of your ends woven in, you are done with your lottie. So super easy. We don't have to do any kind of collar or edging on this because of the way that the yarn is made. Um, but I hope that you all enjoyed this tutorial and I hope that you'll give the Lottie cardigan a try. Again, if you're looking for a crocheted version, my friend Rachel Evelyn Peter also has the twin design to this, the Luna cardigan. And you can find links to everything in the description below or go to meganmakesdo.com to find more. Don't forget to like and subscribe.